girls as to who you are. All right, so you may have just gotten a notice on your screen, Akriti sent. Um, this webinar is gonna be recorded, so we would love to see all of your smiling faces, but just make sure your parents are okay with it being recorded and posted. So today we have Shelby Spencer with us. We are super excited to chat with her. She has spent 20 years in the technology and innovation fields as an executive. She has a lot of experience and a lot of great achievements and um, has mentored people who are starting their own business as well as lots of different women in tech. And Shelby's very passionate about diversity, equity, and inclusion. So today we are super excited to have her chat about accessibility. I believe that's what she's gonna start with talking about and then get into robots and robot power. So thank you so much Shelby for coming here. We're super excited to chat with you. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Um, dare I ask, can you hear me okay? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. I had a little trouble getting in. That is, I'll take at least half responsibility <laughs> for that. <laughs> no. um, so, first of all, it's so nice to talk to you. Um, I am coming to you today from Sacramento, California, so a little distance away. Um, but I got to tell you, I think that's one of the, like, few awesome things about COVID is that it has prevent, presented a lot of opportunities for us to talk to different people around the country or even around the world. I was on the phone with somebody who I never would have talked to um, the other day who was in um, Sweden uh, and that was a COVID opportunity. So we can thank our friend Rona um, for this moment <laughs> at least. I get to see your smiling faces. So, um, to begin, I do want to address the black thing that's on my head. Um, it is an ice hat, and you may also notice that I have red glasses, and that is because I am a person um, who is neurodiverse. I have a little bit of um, difference in the way, not a little bit, I have a lot of difference in the way that my brain processes um, experiences and information, um, things like light and heat and all of that sort of stuff. So um, I have my trusty ice hat on, uh, which I wear like all the time. Uh, and it's just a part of how I look, a lot like my um, red lipstick, if you will. It's just how Shelby Spencer looks. Um, so don't let it bother you. It doesn't bother me. It keeps me nice and cool and chilly. Um, that said, I do want to share my screen because I am planning to talk to you guys today about, I should say, I guess, um, girls, ladies, y'all. Um, I'm planning to talk to y'all about robot power, and I have some fun, um, I have some fun slides to share. So let me go ahead and do that. Give me just one minute. I want to make sure I have everything closed. <laughs> um, okay, let me share my screen. Oh, of course, something else would be up. Um, hang on, and, and in addition to getting my PowerPoint teed up, I also need to let my dog out of my office. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Um, before, I, before I do, this is Pinky. I don't know if you can see her. Uh, okay. Hang on. Cute. Thank you. Ooh, look at all these cute robots. <laughs> look at all these robots. The robots are our friends. Robots are certainly my friends. Um, <clears throat> have any of you read The Wild Robot in school? No, that's something my daughter is nine, and I she have. has read The Wild Robot. Oh, you have? Did you yes. like that book? Yes, it's really good. Very cool. It is really good, isn't it? I love that book. So my daughter is nine, and she is in the fourth grade this year. And sorry, my dog's now barking. Um, <laughs> she's in the fourth grade this year. She read, I think, The Wild Robot some last year. She's read a little bit this year. Uh, one and two, they're all terrific books. So I'm going to try to move. Um, can you see my full screen? Uh, is any part of my um, slides obscured? No, oh, we can see your whole slide. OK, excellent. Um, Okay, so let's talk about robot power. Let me get started. Hang on just a second. Here we go. Before we do that, let me introduce myself just a little bit further. 
Um, I am Shelby. Uh, you can call me Shelby. Uh, you can also feel free to interrupt if you have questions as we go. This is for your benefit. I want to make sure you guys get something out of it. Um, I, like I'm sure many of you, I wear a bunch of different hats. I have different roles that I'm responsible for with different people. So at work, I'm what you would call a chief technology officer. Um, I just say CTO for short. short. Um, I'm also a co-founder. I helped uh, found a company and grew it from a micro business with seven people to now what is a um, public corporation. I'm a mom of a nine-year-old. Her name is Caitlin. I'm also a developer. I write code. And as um, we talk and we go through this, you'll also see that I am a robot power enthusiast. I really enjoy myself a good robot. So I have been in technology for 20 years. Um, I appreciate that that makes me, as my daughter says, that makes you old. <laughs> that makes me old, <laughs> particularly in comparison to y'all. I have been in technology, believe it or not, since computers looked like this. <laughs> um, relics, maybe your parents have like a storage unit and one of these sort of old, big, huge computers. And our computers used to take up like our entire desk. You could have a big table and a big monitor and you'd have to push your chair out because you wouldn't have any room on the table um, for your water or for your lunch. which is a big change from our years today where we use things like laptops and tablets or even our phone. I use my phone as a computer all day long and it's this little bitty nimble device that just fits in my pocket. I've been in technology since before the cloud. Um, we won't get into what all that is today unless you want to. I'm happy to answer any questions you have there, but uh, it's, it's, it's been a long time. <laughs> So, um, when, oh, something has happened to my slides. All right, well, I had a slide between then and there. So let me ask you a question. I wanna start by asking you a question. Um, when you think of technology, what do y'all think of? Can I have some answers? The word technology, what does that mean to you? What do you think of? Nobody have any ideas? Do you think of computers? Oh, I see we have some chats. Theta, yeah, Theta, you should go ahead. I think of like the coding behind like iPhones and like computers and stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah, McKenzie. That is a great answer. Mackenzie thinks of computers and Vivi thinks of phones and music. Ooh, music. I like that answer. All right, well, let's talk about that a little bit. So when you guys think of technology, you kind of gave me some of these answers, which makes sense. This is also what I think of when I think of technology. Um, maybe something even as exotic as like a 3D printer. Um, there's all sorts of cool modern technology that we use and that we love and that make our lives better and um, more rich with experiences. But there's something that's kind of interesting about that word technology. So I asked my friend Siri, Siri, what is the definition of technology? And she said, well, first of all, it's a noun. So there's a little English language arts for you today. Um, <laughs> it means the application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes. Gosh, that was a lot of like big words. So it means anything that exists, an object or a thing that exists that takes science and it takes engineering and it takes um, what we know about science and engineering and it does something um, that helps us as humans in our human life, right? So. What is, when, I, when you broaden that and you think about the definition and kind of what it means, what else could technology be? It's anything that takes science 
or math or engineering and make something useful for us in the world. Okay. When you think about it that way, technology is actually all around us. It is the microscope that you may use in science. It's even the old school typewriter from 100 years ago when they didn't have any electricity before computers. That's even technology. Even something like a tractor, even something as simple as a plow that goes over two oxen from, you know, the, the 20th century, 100 years ago, if you play that game, you know, the Oregon Trail, maybe that was just for when I was little, um, the, you know, the settlers of Catan, and you talk about the oxen and the plows, even a plow, something that's like a, a wooden plow, that would be an example of technology, because it takes science, what we know about science, what we know about the earth, what we know about math, what we know about how the world works, and it turns it into something that we can use to make our lives easier. Like, gosh, technology is all around us. Technology are all the things that we use to live our lives. You could even say something like a spoon or a fork was technology. It truly can be defined to mean everything which is actually pretty cool when you start thinking about it. So when I say I'm a technologist, that means a very broad category of things, right? A lot that I can do or be responsible with or work with in the world. So why do I start this way? Well, it's because a lot of people find technology really scary or really hard, or very unknown, but it's not. In the 20 years I've been in technology, and I have worked with thousands of people as a technologist, one of the common themes is that people will tell me that they're really scared about the software we're working on, or they're really scared about what they have to do on a computer, or they're really scared because they don't understand how software works, or they're really scared because when they're using a piece of technology, it's not working, right? And that, that is a common experience. That's something that maybe you experience um, every day, you know? So, Let's talk about that a little bit more. Here's the sort of thing I would say back to my friend here who's hiding behind his monitor. I would explain to him what the meaning of technology is and point out some of those features of technology that he has right in front of him, right? The overhead light, the desk you're working on, the monitor you're hiding behind, the glasses you're wearing, even the buttons on your shirt, right, are all technology. And this is a really, really important thing to keep in mind because technology can be hard. Technology can be scary, but technology is all around us. So next, what do you think of when I say the word robot, what picture pops into your mind? Nobody have any answers? I think about Sophia. The, oh, I think about Sophia, the robot that looks like a human. And Theta, you should go ahead. What do you think about? I think about, like, things that are, like, humans or animals that aren't and like stuff that people can control and sometimes they can think on their own but like it's all artificial intelligence so kind of like anything with artificial intelligence mm -hmm. yeah absolutely That's like, vivi what about good you? answer uh probably the first thing that i think of is honestly uh He's a robot dog. His name's K9. He's from Doctor Who. Very cool. 
Krisha, what do you think? I like those answers. Go ahead. Nope. Oh, you're really soft, Krisha. I don't know if we can hear you. I think of a phone. You think of a phone? A phone? Ooh, I like where you're headed. <laughs> So, do you think of something like this? So, one of our answers I thought was was terrific, which is something that's kind of like a human or an animal, but not. It's kind of like it's a fake human, right? A fake animal. Um, that's what a lot of us think of when we think of robots. Um, that's very common. That's how you see it. You know, that's how it's described in the wild robot, right? The book. Um, that's how we think about it often. Um, and that's what you see in movies, for instance, right? Um, or, or other books or TV shows, even podcasts. That's super, super common, makes a lot of sense, but I understand why you may think of that. But like our last answer gave, the definition of what is, it, what is a robot is a really broad category, just like technology. So what is a robot? I love this one. My daughter has some of the toy robots, like a, a robot unicorn and a robot kitty. <laughs> like robots could be lots of things. And they certainly, even the way that we um, depict robots in the fake human or fake animal form, you can see that's really changed over time, hasn't it? They now look a lot more like round edges, much softer um, versus some of the ways that we used to depict robots, which are very mechanical, right? Very metallic. But anyways, let's ask Siri. What does Siri say a robot is? Well, uh, lots of, you know, garbly words, but um, a robot, reading in the middle, a robot is a machine, especially one that's programmable by a computer and is capable of carrying out a complex series of actions automatically. So, okay, I'm not going to keep reading. Let's, let's use like normal language to describe that, okay? A robot is a machine that can on its own automatically um, complete a series of activities that produce a result, okay? That have something happen that hopefully you wanted to have happen. <laughs> that is a robot, a machine that's capable of doing things to make something happen. Well, gosh, that could be a lot of things, right? That could be something like Roomba. Does anybody here have a Roomba? I just got a Roomba, a robot vacuum. Oh my goodness, it's terrific. It vacuums for you. And it looks like a little Frisbee, right? Moving around your house. It figures out all of the angles, how to go under the chair, if your floor is really clean or not. It's amazing. But another example of a robot would be a vending machine, right? You put in your money, you punch in a code, and it goes and it finds your food for you. That's a robot. A robot is also something that doesn't even move, like a calculator, right? You're the ones doing the movie <laughs> when you're using a calculator, but the calculator itself is a machine that's been programmed to do something for you. Wow, robots could actually be everywhere. And in fact, they are everywhere. <clears throat> so the next time you or one of your friends or your parents or your grandparents says, oh, I'm afraid of technology. Oh, I don't know computers. I don't know these things. Ah, I want you to say, that's baloney. <laughs> confront that fear. Confront that myth. It's a myth, right? Computers aren't scary. Technology is not scary. Robots aren't scary. They are literally all around us in everything that we do. Everything from the calculator in the drawer in the kitchen 
to even like the toaster. You push down the lever, it gets hot, and it gives you your food back. <laughs> so if grandma says, I'm afraid of, you can say, grandma, are you okay using your toaster? Okay. Then you, then we, we can work through this computer issue together. <laughs> Next time you're doing, if you're doing virtual learning or you're using your computer and something happens and you don't know why and it's not doing what you want it to do, Google Docs is messing up or it didn't, you can't find where it was saved and you begin to get scared or you begin to get anxious and you're having a kind of a fear response, confront that and say, that's baloney. <laughs> I'm not afraid of technology. I'm not afraid of robots. I'm not afraid of the computer. I'm not afraid of the internet. I'm not afraid of this code I'm trying to write. It's everywhere. I have control over the things that are in my life. But here's the deal sometimes. Sometimes even I get scared. I've been in technology for 20 years. I have developed dozens of software products. I have millions of users who use my software products. I have hundreds and hundreds of clients who buy the software products I wrote. And I still get scared. It happens. Sometimes it feels like maybe I don't really know how to do something. It's not doing what I want it to do. And that makes me feel a certain way. And that's okay. But what I tell myself when I start feeling scared is it's just a dumb robot. I'm in control. I'm in control of my experience. Yes, the robot is being bad right now. <laughs> yes, the robots are perhaps not doing what I want them to do. But it's just a dumb robot. I can do it. I can figure it out. That's so important to keep in mind. That's so important to remember. Particularly if you are trying to learn how to code. Sometimes I'm coding and I'm over here typing an ordered list. It looks very normal and tidy and organized and it gets hard and complex and stressful and I needed it done already and it's not working and the code starts to feel like this. Oh my gosh, I can't figure it out, right? It looks intense, it's too much, it's overwhelming. When that happens, I say, it's just a dumb robot and I walk away, right? And I come back until I'm ready to fix that robot. Sometimes, we're working on something and we have a bug or it's just not working the way we want to. And my computer is beginning to feel big and scary because these are hard things. Technology is hard. And I remind myself, it's just a dumb robot. I work in my company today with hundreds of medical professionals, really, really smart clinicians who went to school to learn the body and how to help people. I do that because my company is a healthcare company. These are brilliant people, many of whom have master's degrees and PhDs and all sorts of certifications. They went to school for 30 years <laughs> to be able to achieve. But you know what they didn't go to school for? Robots. <laughs> technology as we defined in terms of our modern technology computers. And so what do I tell them? How do I encourage them? How do I um, help them learn software? I explain to them, it's just a dumb robot. It's just a robot. 
It is literally just a robot that's in your computer. So this is really just a whole bunch of robots that are all working together to produce this hardware experience for you. This software, your, your Google Docs, your slides, right? Um, your virtual, if you're doing distance learning and you have to log in through a system, check out a book online, your, um, your apps uh, on your iPad, Roblox, for instance, Minecraft, for instance, the games that you even play on your Nintendo Switch, Mario Kart, Just Dance. They're all just robots. <laughs> they are all just dumb robots. They are robots that we humans program to produce a desired output, right? To produce something that we want and that is valuable to us. So, <clears throat> all of that is to say that you control the future. You control technology. You control the robots. You control the code that is in your life. You control the technical projects. You control the distance learning. You control the iPad as you're playing your Ro Roblox or your Minecraft. You control these things. And you are able to confront um, any sort of fears that you may begin to feel as you are working through, um, again, the coding, the programming, or using them as a user yourself. They're just dumb robots. So I wanna, um, I wanna stop here. Uh, that is the end of my slides. And I want to open it up to questions and some conversation uh, about the way that we perhaps could use this or maybe other things that you just want to know um, about being the head of technology uh, in an organization or having lots of software and millions of users. Anyway, <laughs> oh, let, I just want let's to start pause by me talking. <laughs> I just want to start by saying that that was wonderful and I loved your visuals. They were really fun. Theta put a oh, question thanks. in the chat. She's wondering what your company is. My company. So, um, our, my company name is called Briotics Health, and um, we provide health care to employees in companies. So um, we have about, you know, <laughs> we, have, we have hundreds and hundreds of companies, um, like maybe the companies where your mom and dad work, and um, people at work, they, some people do a very physical job, and then other people do, do work like I do, like working on the computer all day. And as you're doing that, often you start feeling pain, right, in your body, right? Um, I don't know if you've ever looked down too long on your iPad playing Roblox, that's my daughter's problem, uh, and your neck started to hurt. We work with companies to help their employees not feel pain. We help do um, design work in buildings uh, to make sure that desks are set up correctly. Uh, we work with um, firemen and police officers and electrical company linesmen, um, helping make sure that they are able to continue to do their jobs, um, that they're safe while doing so, and that their bodies are as healthy as they can be. So occupational medicine um, <laughs> are the terms that we use in the industry, but that was a great question. So it sounds like you get to help a lot of people through your job. Can you talk a little bit about how technology helped you get there? How technology helped me get to this place or to where like my company is at? Technology helps you help people. Help people. Yeah. So the reality is that it doesn't matter what job you do today. Um, you need computers in order to do that work. And that's kind of funny. We don't always think about it that way, right? So if you're in a doctor's office and a doctor is seeing you, they're helping you, right? But you're not, and you're not thinking about the fact that, well, in order for them to see you, they had to pull up a record of your history. But you're, guess what, on computers. And then after they see you and they talk to you about your sore throat and like whatever else is going, they have to type those notes, like legally in order to practice medicine, the law says 
but they have to take notes, right, over how what you guys talked about and what they prescribed to you, which has to go in a computer. Um, and then that has to, they have to send a signal to your pharmacy. Uh, and that uses a computer. Uh, <laughs> even something like um, maybe you get your yard cut by a company. Maybe your, 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 the, the adults in your life don't cut your lawn and somebody else cuts your lawn. Uh, and somebody comes, you know, every week to mow and blow, right, uh, and keep your yard nice and tidy. How are they going to bill you? How do your mom and dad pay for that? How do they keep track of when they came and that they sent you a note about needing to change your watering schedule? All of that happens on computers. Literally every single job um, that exists today requires computers to at the very least um, be able to be paid, uh, to be able to register and sign up, uh, to pay taxes, etc. So computers help in all of the occupations and in all of the disciplines. And my company, um, Technology, helps uh, de we, we do lots of things, including helping to make sure that we have a full history um, of the person that we're seeing. We make sure that uh, we are able to, we have an app that they're able to download on their phone um, that contains lists of the things they need to do in order to stay healthy uh, and to hurt less. It keeps track of their appointments, you know, things like that. Um, so lots of different ways that technology helps. Does that answer your question? Yep, it does. Thank you. Good question. Other questions I can answer. So I have some questions for um, our friends here. Can you remember a time that you've been working on your computer and that you have felt you have felt nervous? Can you tell us about that? Nobody's ever felt nervous on a computer. <laughs> no. I think okay. Fisher has one, but we can't hear her. Um, Vivi, go ahead. Oh. Uh, so I've started writing some fan fiction for uh, one of my favorite book series. And there's this one time where uh, my document, where I had all of my information on it, wouldn't open. <gasps> and then it was like, hmm, I don't want to work for you. And I was like, no, oh. no, 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 no. This is very bad. <laughs> but yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, 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 this can't happen. I worked so hard on oh. this. <laughs> yeah. Were you ever able to get it open? Oh, uh, yeah. I was. <laughs> that's scary, Excellent. though. Well, you that's a great... That. That is such a great example because that is terrifying. <laughs> that is so scary when that happens. And the sort of thing, again, that, um, you know, we find very helpful is to, okay, I, I say this to my daughter all the time. And at this point, she now just repeats it back to me. The robots are being, <laughs> the robots are being bad. <laughs> the robots are not cooperating. I do not like the robot today. And able to kind of take a break, walk away for a minute, and then come back and try again. Or um, think of other ways to access that information or access that document, um, you know, different directories that you can go down. So the truth is that um, technology is really hard. It is, a, it is a really hard space to play and to work. Uh, we do hard things, right? Uh, if we're technologists, if we're writing, um, if we're writing code, we're building software, even if we are, for instance, creating slides. There's a lot about creating slides if you are working on slides either for um, a, an assignment or for fun. My daughter likes to make slides on her own for fun. Or if you are even playing a video game, um, there's a lot about working in um, 
you know, in Minecraft or in Roblox or even, in, you know, Mario Kart, there's a lot of those sorts of activities that we do that are very hard. They're very complex. There's a lot you have to remember, right? Um, there's a lot you may have to do in terms of coordination with your fingers and commands that you have to send to the computer to get, you know, our Mario player to do what we want to do in the right sequence. And some of this is actually very difficult. So it's really helpful um, to have a technique in mind that will allow you to remain mindful when you're working with the stuff that may frustrate you, but encourage you to keep going. Because cute and friendly robots <laughs> are truly who is occupying your computer, who is in your uh, Nintendo Switch. Has anyone else had a frustrating coding experience or experience with computers? Yeah, Theta, go for it. Once for school, I had to do a Zoom meeting and my microphone wouldn't work. And then when I finally got that to work, I couldn't share my screen. So oh. it completely didn't work. <laughs> no. Yeah. And then like your Wi-Fi stops working and then your computer needs to have an update installed. Yeah, I had trouble getting my audio working for this call. I had to remind myself, it's just dumb robots. <laughs> and that's when we're all, we're, we're all computer experienced. Like we're all good with computers. Yes. We still had trouble today, so it happens. It does happen, but it doesn't mean that you're not awesome at computers. It doesn't mean you're not awesome at technology. Technical difficulties are just what it means to work with robots. They break and they disobey and they run out of power and things don't fit together the way they're supposed to. <laughs> Maggie said that she gets nervous in Minecraft when she's lost and can't find her base. And I totally relate to that. I think that's the worst feeling ever. I just create a second home and I give up on the first one. <laughs> I love that. Um, so does my daughter. <laughs> I will often sit with her while she's playing. Um, and that also gives me anxiety <laughs> and makes me nervous as well. <laughs> that was a great answer, Maggie. <laughs> so Very Shelby, good. when you're stressed out, how do you remember to calm yourself down and what do you do to relax? Oh, well, I think, um, I do think that they're dumb robots. And then I start thinking about the component parts that may not be working with that robot. Because often we have this experience, right, where it feels really bad or somebody's asking me questions and it's not working and it needs to be done immediately. Um, and particularly when working with technology or, or frankly just working on computers. I think, Vivi, your example of um, the document not opening was a terrific example um, because that is so stressful. But ultimately what you have, it's like puzzle pieces. It's like one of these mechanical robots. You just have pieces that aren't working together. Um, to take as an example, the school districts around here are all doing virtual learning, and they've had a lot of trouble keeping their systems up. Because what's happening is these little pieces of the pie are breaking, right? So, for example, using um, uh, you know using the example uh, that was given a minute ago, if you can't successfully connect your audio, well, that's just one little thing that's not working, but it breaks the whole experience, and that is usually what happens in technology, right? Um, that's usually what happens even in our experience when we get really stressed out. The entire thing has been kind of thrown out of whack or has been broken or isn't working because one little piece is out of alignment. One little piece isn't connecting. Our microphone isn't connecting. We don't have a passcode. You know, something to that effect. So I try to really kind of step back and think about, okay, where is that one little piece that isn't working the way it needs to, so I can take action to fix that one piece. Does that make sense? 
Theta wants to know what is the job that you wanted to have when you were younger? Or no, she said, was this the job that you wanted to have when you were younger? Oh, that was a really good question. No, I got to be honest. Um, so when I was younger, this is how old I am, we didn't really have computers. <laughs> we didn't have like really the internet. We didn't have phones. We didn't have a computer in my house. I had no idea what software was um, <laughs> or hardware. I didn't know what Google was. Google didn't, it wasn't, it didn't exist. Um, so no, I didn't know that I wanted to be um, the big boss of software because truly those things <laughs> didn't exist. Uh, they didn't exist in the way that they do today. But what I wanted to be was an Egyptologist. Uh, we used to get uh, National Geographic magazines, um, or my grandfather did. And whenever I would go over to their house, I would go through all of his uh, National Geographic ones for all the archaeology editions. And anytime there was an archaeologist who was doing some sort of digging and finding artifacts from previous civilizations, that was like, <gasps> what I wanted to do. I wanted to spend my summers in a pyramid in Egypt. Um, but I grew up and I don't do hot weather very well. <laughs> so, <laughs> that didn't work out, but computers have worked out terrifically because just like an archeologist who's looking for one little thing, right? In sand with a little paintbrush, I'm also looking for that one little piece that is making the robot army fail. <laughs> so it's very similar, ironically. Yes, I, I'm super glad to hear that, Vivi. Egypt is amazing. Other questions, other things you'd want to know? You, have, you guys have the best questions. I mean, truly, great questions. What is your favorite part about your job? Well, my favorite part actually is what I got to do with you guys today, which is to help people see that it's not scary. Um, you know, I, I can't tell you how many people, my clients, my, I, you know, we have hundreds of employees, our employees, um, you know, my daughter, I, everybody comes to me with their, their fears and their problems um, about technology. Um, and they don't know where to go. And, and then not just about technology, but just like in general, like they don't know um, how to grow the company or they don't know how to support a client doing this certain thing. Um, or, you know, they have hundreds of thousands of employees and they need to, you know, get these employees taken care of in a certain way, but they don't know how. What I love is being able to show them how, that, it, that you can do it, that, it, that there are steps you can take that the robots fit together to create a machine that creates this outcome. Um, I love the ability to translate the experience that people are having in real time, be it negative or positive, um, into a digital world that will work for them and it will allow them to further their goals and go a lot farther than they ever thought they could. I love that translation experience of things from real life into kind of a digital information driven world. Does that make sense? That was a great question. I think Beta has one. What is your greatest accomplishment in technology? Oh, well, that's a good question. I've accomplished a lot of things in technology. Um, I think, hmm, I think um, some of the products that Bryotics Health is running today um, actually are my greatest accomplishments in technology. We have software products that, you know, I wrote in 
a bedroom of my house um, that are used by millions of people, um, including, you know, a ton of very large technology companies. Um, the people who actually write things like you know, the software we're using for this meeting use technology that um, <laughs> started with a white sheet of paper at my kitchen table and some stick it notes uh, that were placed in different ways. I still have that paper, by the way, um, and, and are used today by, you know, the engineers of some of the greatest technology, technology solutions that are around, and it's used to help them feel good in the job that they do, which is super important. So I think that's probably um, one of my greatest accomplishments um, is building some of those products that are in use. And then another thing would be the um, information architecture oh, um, of my company. I'm very proud of that, but I won't talk about that at length. <laughs> that's, that's like, you know, a little more boring. <laughs> Prisha has an example. She said that when she was on Zoom today, um, the microphone and video for her teacher stopped <laughs> during class. I bet your teacher could have used a reminder that really it was just dumb robots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's rough. That is rough. <laughs> that is Maggie, really rough. Do you have something to share? Yes. So, something similar happened to me in the middle of the class. Uh, my teacher got picked off of the Zoom in the middle of class. Who and kicked her off? And it stopped. And a lot of the time, I miss a meeting. Mm. Zoom isn't great. Yeah, there are a lot of problems that pop up with Zoom. It's still pretty cool, though. You know, that's I mean, it is really cool if you consider that, you know, we didn't have Zoom even a few years ago, right? And we wouldn't have been able to connect on a meeting like this. It was something that only really big businesses did. Um, but yeah, it's also very stressful when you're supposed to be in class and you can't get in. <laughs> or you're supposed to teach class <laughs> and you can't get to your students. Um, it is, it's, it's both possible to be amazing and awesome and change the world and one of the greatest things that you can do with your time and be very frustrating and challenging and scary such that you have to remind yourself that it's just dumb robots. It's possible to be both things at the same time. And certainly I think technology and coding um, and even just being an end user I am amazed at how complex it has become for us just to live our lives and pay our bills and log into, you know, basic things. <laughs> it's really been become very complicated. Shelby, can you talk a little bit about what it's like to be like a, a female C CTO? And to be in charge of like all of these men, are they pretty good about reporting up to you or what that, what's that like? So my development team is more than 50% female. Um, that's so and cool. that's, you know, I started my career in technology and a group of about 40 men <laughs> and it was me. <laughs> and about 40 men <laughs> and um, you know that was a different experience and one when I became um, when I became a boss and I became uh, you know able to impact who was hired I really worked to change I, I have done that by hiring a lot of women um, into the organizations and the teams that I, I build and run. And so um, today, it's, it, it feels like nothing to me because it just feels like managing people because they're just people, right? And it's just a, a nice balanced mix of people. Um, 
and and I was able to do that because I had the control over things like the hiring. <laughs> so, I don't know if that answered your question. <laughs> That's cool to hear that there's equality, and like equity at your company. There is. <laughs> There is, and that's not to say that um, we aren't um, continuing to improve, right? Because you know, um, e you know, equality uh, is intersectional, uh, and it's it's possible that you may be really great in one area and not as great in another area. Um, and as a person who is a person with a disability. Um, right, that would be an example where you could have a perfect mix of men and women or even, you know, uh, ethnicities, but not have people sufficiently represented who have, you know, disabilities. So um, equity is, is a, a constant commitment and something that we are continuing to work on every single day, as should every organization, <laughs> because it's not a destination, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. Since we only have a few minutes left, we usually like to end with some sort of parting advice for our girls. This can be related to women empowerment or technology. Just kind of one final piece of advice you have for anyone listening. So I think that there are, um, I think there's the, the single most important thing that you can keep in mind in terms of your career, and that's your educational career, that's a professional career, that's your career as a daughter of parents and people, <laughs> all right, just living a life, is that the single most um, powerful tool that you have is initiative. Most people go through life waiting for somebody to give them permission, permission to study this or to do that or to go to this place um, or to change something that they don't like. And the reality is you don't need permission to make an impact or to do something new or to change something you don't like or to learn a new skill you don't need permission. You need initiative. If you don't like how something is working in your house, you can propose a solution. You can work to change that and make that happen. You don't need permission um, to do those things. Similarly, if you want to learn a new skill, you want to learn Spanish. I don't know. You can do that by using initiative, just taking that step forward. You don't need your mom or your dad to say that, yes, you can learn Spanish. You could look up videos on YouTube today on how to learn Spanish. So throughout your entire career, your entire life, the single most important thing to remember and to use, I think, in terms of exercising your power is initiative. Don't wait for permission. Use your initiative. I love that. That's so powerful. I'm really glad that you shared that with us. And we actually have one more final question from Theta. I'm sure you can see in the chat. What steps have you taken to help you get to each accomplishment? I think um, the one unifying step, the one universal step that I've taken for every accomplishment I've made in my life and my career is I taught myself the ability to learn. <laughs> right? And that means being able to read something new and to think about it and to figure out how to apply it, right? And, you know, what's really interesting about that process is oftentimes the reason we are unable to learn something new to apply is because we get really nervous and really scared when we encounter something that is we don't understand, that's unknown, that's hard and complicated. And whenever you learn something new, by definition, you don't know it. <laughs> you don't understand it. It's brand new to you. 
so you have this moment and sometimes a lot of moments of anxiety, right? If I decide I want to learn Spanish and I look up some YouTube videos, they may get scary to me. It may feel uncomfortable in my body within 10 to 15, you know, immediately maybe of watching that video and the ability to say, you know what? It's okay. They're dumb robots. I, it's okay, I can learn this. I'm gonna stay at it until I get it and until I figure it out. The ability to take those deep breaths and to calm yourself down and to stay committed to trying to do it and using your initiative to make that change. Um, that's really the, the secret sauce, if you will, to my success and I think success in life is the ability to lean in when it gets hard and to stay the course um, and to teach yourself something new and, and to then, you know, apply it. So, I know, self-learning, that would be the, that would be the, the step um, that I've taken for pretty much all of the accomplishments in life. That's also one of the most important things that you can have if you're gonna be a technologist or you're gonna be a developer. The ability to teach yourself something new and you have to learn how to do that. You have to teach yourself to teach yourself how to do something new. The ability to do that is um, is the key to being successful in technology and I think in life. That's a great point. Shelby, we honestly can't thank you enough for coming on and chatting with our girls today. I know I really appreciated learning, first off, about robots. I thought that was a really fun slide deck. But just hearing from your experiences and hearing all of your advice, it was very impactful. So thank you for taking the time. And Akriti, if you want to close this off. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, Shelby, you did mention you have a fourth grader. We would love for her to join our speaker series. We do these weekly. Um, so girls, thank you so much for joining us. Um, next week we we may have a speaker but we may take a break we're not entirely sure yet so we'll keep yeah. you updated um one more thing if you don't get text alerts from us and would like text alerts from us um email us your phone number and we can start sending text alerts um if you're already in one of our sessions so you did coding classes with us last semester your parents should be getting them um but like vivi i know that you're not on that list so if you want to be added um, just let me know and I could do that for you. Yeah. Theta, do you have something to say? You can just unmute yourself. I would just like to say thank you, Shelby, for coming on. It was very inspiring for you to speak to us. Oh, you are too kind. Thank you so much. I enjoyed talking to you guys. Remember, they are just dumb robots and you are the boss of them. <laughs> I feel like I need Shelby just like talking to me every day. Like I'll just- oh, I, I even recorded. tell my development team, <laughs> even my development team, professional developers, they're just dumb robots, okay? <laughs> I love that. That's yeah, so wonderful. For joining us, Shelby, it was, we loved having you. That was so great. We wish you all a great rest of your night and yeah, we'll keep in touch. Um, on next speakers. <laughs> Thank yep. you all. Thanks everyone. Bye. 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 Thanks Shelby. Bye.